Dr. Renato Yusilidum, Jr., the Secretary of the Department of Science and Technology. I would like to introduce to you the PlanSmart Ready to Rebuild application. Through PlanSmart, I envision the Philippines to be a geospatially enabled country where data is analyzed together with time and location so that our decision making, our analysis would be science-based and would really be used for the effective planning for different purposes. And in this case, how we can prepare in advance to recover before any disaster would happen. The Plan Smart is built upon the GeoRIS Philippines Initiative, whose vision is to be the Philippine central source of information for accurate and efficient hazards and risk assessment to make our country resilient to various natural hazards and climate change. It is both a governance and ICT and geospatial platform where it would spur collaboration among different government organizations, the local governments, the private sector, and the academe so that we can guide our decision makers in a transparent, systematic, and efficient manner. It is an ICT and geospatial platform because it would promote the use of technology to access data and analysis. The GeoRIS Philippines Integrated Platform is composed of data that would follow standards and protocols so that we can actually analyze this together with many other information. We have hazards information, exposure database that can be accessed by everyone at the local level to national government agencies and the public through various applications like the Hazard Hunter, the GeoMapper, GeoAnalytics, and now through the Plan Smart application. The GRS Philippines Integrated Platform would consist of data standards that would ensure consistency of naming conventions, facilitate faster computations, and would promote sustainability. It is composed of 16-digit codes that are classified according to the type of data that are being shown and would have details that would describe the data set. Critical to the collection of data would be the GeoMapper P8 application. This is designed for us to have a nationally consistent exposure database throughout the whole country by developing tools and systems that would enable local government units, national government agencies, and the private sector to share data according to standards. Aside from collecting data, this GeoMapper P8 would also enable us to report information that would be critical to monitor what is happening on the ground after a major disaster. So aside from exposure, we have the situation data mapper that would help us evaluate what is happening on the ground for appropriate decision making. The second application is the GeoAnalytics PHs. It would enable us to evaluate a political unit like a barangay a town or a city or a province, so that we can find out how much percentage of land the people exposed by sex, by ages, that will be affected by these different hazards. Aside from this, critical facilities, if the locations are contributed by local governments and national agencies, would also be analyzed according to their exposure. The third application related to the GRS Philippines Initiative is the Hazard Hunter PHs. It is a one-stop shop for multi-hazards assessment, where by zooming in on the map or by typing in the location of your area of interest, you'll be able to find out in less than one minute all the hazards that an area can be affected with. Aside from that, if you want additional information as to the recommendations per hazard, you can also get it using the Hazard Hunter PH. Plan Smart is actually built upon two programs by government. The first is the Ready to Rebuild Capacity Building Program by the National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council, led by OCD and assisted by the World Bank, where local government leaders and disaster managers were trained to prepare baseline data, risk-informed recovery plans, and risk financing strategies prior to disasters. The second program is the GeoRISK Philippines Initiative, which informs local disaster risk reduction and management planning, where we can introduce science-based information so that planning will be facilitated 
and will be much faster utilizing hazards and risk assessment provided by mandated government organizations. The GeoRISK Philippines Initiative combined with a Disaster Rehabilitation and Recovery Planning Guide Workbook makes the Plan Smart a very effective app for faster, efficient recovery planning. The Plan Smart application would streamline processes through the following auto generate rehabilitation and recovery plan using pro forma document, auto generate hazards assessment using Hazard Hunter PH and Geoanalytics for pre and post disaster data, actual input of areas affected by the events, be it earthquake, volcanic eruptions, typhoons, using the Plan Smart app, access nationally consistent hazards information and LGU scale exposure information, and be able to have a routing mechanism on verification and submission of final plan through the Plan Smart app. The Plan Smart app would be able to streamline planning processes through the following. If there is an event, DOST Fevox would trigger the Plan Smart by inputting event name in the app. After that, local government units will be able to formulate rehabilitation and recovery plan, and then this would undergo verification processes by key local government departments. The plan is submitted then to appropriate level in the LGUs, and the plan is approved by appropriate level in the local government units. In the future, we will further improve the plan smart process through the introduction of national government agencies input, where after FIVOX would trigger the planning process, the National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council task force would input data, which will be provided to the local government units, which will then start their rehabilitation and recovery planning, after which this will undergo verification processes by key government agencies, then submitted to the National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council, and then approval by NDRMC through the Office of Civil Defense. If necessary, the plan can also be submitted to the Office of the President for their approval. Let me now introduce to you the details on the functionalities and tools of the Plan Smart application. This is the login page of the Plan Smart for rehabilitation and recovery. The user will be required to input their credentials. This is the dashboard where it will display the total number of new events, pending plans and revisions that are needed to be made. In the dashboard, you would see a button named Plan and this part is where planners will see existing plans and the total number of plans created. After clicking the Add New Plan, users will be required to fill out the various portions in the plan. There is also a button in Managing the Plan, where post-disaster rehabilitation and recovery plan of a city for a specific disaster would be created. Under the Create the Plan, the user will encounter major parts. First is the background of the plan. The next is the local government unit profile. Third would be the projected or assessed impacts of disasters. And the fourth would be the disaster rehabilitation and recovery program. For the background of the plan, this will be auto-generated and also in some data, you would have manual input. Auto-generated would be the disaster event name, associated hazards, plan identification number, and plan title. And for those with manual input would be the event data of occurrence and intended planning period. For the local government unit physical profile, auto-generation of information will be automatically made. LGU name, the total land area, number of barangays, the climate type, and the climate description. For its socioeconomic data, it will include total population, income class, poverty incidence, average household size, and primary economic activities, all information sourced from the Philippine Statistical Authority. For the LGU hazard profile, you need to click on a button to generate hazard assessment 
using Hazard Hunter pH. Automatically, the sample hazards assessment will be shown. If you want to see hazard maps, you click on a button, the pre-disaster maps, so that maps, charts, and tables are shown based on the Geoanalytics pH assessment. If you want to include post-disaster maps, click on the button post-disaster map, and this would show you the actual observed areas of damages. The dashboard enables users to digitize affected areas based on ground observations during disasters. There are available tools in the app where you can zoom in and out of a geographical image, search by typing the address, draw, polyline, polygon, and mark at the target location to determine the affected areas of a hazard, edit existing polyline, polygon, and point, remove a marker or drawings, and save the polyline, polygon, and marker you have edited. The projected or assessed impacts of a disaster will be auto-generated and digitized from the GeoMapper pH. If you have data on the actual impact, you can input this as well in the PlanSmart app. Actual number of people and properties affected by the disaster event based on pre-disaster input from GeoMapper and post-disaster input from PlanSmart can be used. The impacts of the disaster based on land use distribution will be based on GeoMapper entries. For the Disaster Rehabilitation and Recovery Program part, there will be several items that need to be indicated. First would be the goal, the outcome, the sector, the general strategies to be used, and the cross-cutting concerns where you will be guided by downdrop menus. You can actually edit the objective details or delete the objective. For the sectors, you can actually input the objective based on specific measurable and time-bound equivalents of the desired sectoral outcomes, select strategies, the plans of action to achieve the objectives, and add a new row for additional strategy. And then you can save the objective and close the window. After identifying the objectives and strategies of the program, you would need to prioritize the programs, projects, and activities for rehabilitation and recovery. You need to identify the programs, projects, and activities that would satisfy your local government unit needs. You also need to determine the phasing, timeline, and implementation of the PPAs, estimate the funding requirement of the PPAs, and to identify the funding source for the PPAs. You can edit the PPA details or delete the PPA if necessary. Once you have identified the objectives, strategies, the programs, projects, and activities, we then now need to input the following details. The location or site, the target beneficiaries, the funding source, the implementing agencies, the time frame or implementation period, the total funding requirements, and the annual breakdown of funding requirements. If you want to visualize the financing requirements, you can push a button, Financing and Investment Requirements. This will be auto-generated based on programs, projects, and activities input by source of fund and by sector. For example, you will see the number of projects per sector, the short-term or within one year financing requirement, or the medium term from two to four years financing requirement. The next step in creating the plan would be the institutional arrangement. This would cover the organizational structures for rehabilitation and recovery, the role of stakeholders, the committees and its subcommittees. Hence, we need to define the organization name, the interventions that they are involved with, the locations of intervention, the timelines of interventions, and the focal person, the name of the committees or subcommittees, the lead, the member agencies, and the roles and responsibilities. If you want to add a row for committee or subcommittees, you can push a button. And if you're done, you can save these additional rows. The last step in creating the plan 
is developing the communication strategy. Government agencies and local government units should designate focal points for communications activities and establish reporting mechanisms to facilitate a smooth flow of information. We need to identify the issues or concerns, the possible response or action, the spokesperson, and communication channels. If you want to add a new row for issues and concerns, you can create it by pushing a button and then saving it after you're done. This is your final product, an auto-generated rehabilitation and recovery plan that can be submitted for approval and funding. So ladies and gentlemen, Plan Smart Ready to Rebuild is a catalyst for timely, efficient, and effective planning. Please use the Plan Smart Ready to Rebuild app to plan ahead, work smarter, and rebuild faster. Thank you very much.